All right, this is 13.1b. Um, this is sort of functions of several variables continued, but we'll sort of be a bit more specific. We'll say level curves and surfaces. So before I talk about level curves and surfaces, I want to also introduce one other way of thinking about functions of several variables. Let's say of visualizing. f of x, y, and f of x, y, z. So one way of visualizing a function of two variables, like we saw earlier, was like a surface, like a paraboloid, or a sphere, or not a sphere, like a paraboloid, or a plane, or a cone, or something like that. But here's another way that can be really, really useful for some of the applications we'll see later on. So for a function of two variables, we could think of it as representing something like, like a really good analogy is like the temperature at a certain point. So we could think of f of x, y as representing the temperature in say degrees Celsius, doesn't really matter, at a point x, y. So then for example, if uh, say x, if f of x, y was x plus y squared, we don't really know how to sketch that, right? That wasn't in our list of things that we knew how to graph, and it's not a really easy thing to graph anyway, but we can still use it. We can still think of it as saying, for example, f of 1, 2, that's 1 plus 2 squared is 5. So we could think of that as saying, at the point 1, 2, that the temperature is, in this case, like 5 degrees Celsius. And for example, if you plug in a different point, say f of say one negative one is one plus negative one squared is two. So we could say at the point one negative one right there, the point would be two degrees. So one advantage of this is that this works for functions of three variables as well. So a function like f of x, y, z, we didn't talk about sketching those because to sketch the graph of a function in three variables, you need a four dimensional space. That doesn't really work. So, but this could still be, let's say it could represent the temperature at a point in three dimensional space. That makes perfect sense, right? So it's a way of picturing like a function of three variables without having a real picture. So for example, if f of, I, if f of x, y, z was say x plus y, z, then if we said f of one, two, three, this is one plus two times three is seven. So we could say at one, two, three, it's seven degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit or Kelvin or whatever you wanted to do. It's a different way of thinking about it. So. Moving on from there. So I wanted to introduce that because it'll also help us understand level curves and surfaces. So level curves. So here's the definition. So given a function of two variables, given f of x, y, and some, let's say, value c, The level curve for, let's say, f at c. This is the set of points this is a two-dimensional thing. It's a set of points x, y for which f of x, y equals c. So, for example, so I'll give you an example, and then we'll say, look at, at what this sort of means visually in two different ways, right? So this first example will be without any particular visualization. So if we have say f of x, y equals say x squared minus y, then we could say the level curve 
I'll just abbreviate that level curve at C equals five is the set of points where the function x squared minus y equals five. So in this case, that's a parabola. That's the same as y equals, uh, we could say, could subtract the y minus the five. So this is the parabola in two dimensional space. So that's the level curve. So for the level curve, you literally just set it equal to the constant that's given. That constant will be given. Like I chose that five. And then you set it equal to five and then you plot it and you see what's there. Now you might say like, well, what does this mean? So here are two different ways of thinking about what this means, right? Let me clear the screen and we'll talk about those two different ways. And one of them will be related to the picture that we drew in 13.1a, and the other will be related to this notion of temperature. And, that, and both of those can be helpful. So meaning. So this is a good example. So f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared. The first one we drew, the paraboloid. So if we look at the level curve at c equals nine. So there are two ways of thinking of this. And if we think of it as the graph of f, if we think of the graph of f of x, y, that's a paraboloid. Let me draw that in first. And so what you can imagine is imagine going up to z equals nine, right? Because the level curve, let me just be clear about this. The level curve right here is x squared plus y squared equals nine. So that's the same as saying z is equal to nine. So you could picture going up to z equals nine and looking at the function. So imagine like the plane z equals nine. Or if you like the function equals nine. And you can think about what the intersection of those two look like, right? So up at z equals nine, the paraboloid forms a circle. And what we're doing is when we do the level curve, we're plotting that circle. So if we were to sort of completely forget the z for a second, that circle, it's a circle of radius three, looks like that. So it's almost like what you did is that you were to take that slice and just draw the slice. So think of a level curve is a slice of a function. Right. One nice way of thinking about it is i.e. it's a two dimensional slice of a 3D object. If you think about the paraboloid as being three-dimensional, the slice of it is two-dimensional. It's just a circle. And it's a circle up at z equals nine because that's the c value we chose. Now, a different way of thinking about it is if we were thinking of f of x, y as, as a temperature, then what we've got here is, in this particular example, the level curve is all the points where the temperature is nine degrees Celsius in our case. So what that means is if you didn't think about a Z axis, if you never really thought about it, if you just thought about the Z as being the temperature, what that says is if you stay on that circle right there, on this circle, the temperature is nine degrees. On the circle and only on that circle. If you step off the circle, it changes. So this is where the term level comes from. It's that the function remains level. If the function is the height, like on the left-hand side of the screen, then it's like saying the height is at nine. 
on the right hand side if you think about the temperature the function is temperature then we're saying that the function the temperature is that so um, likewise we can then look at level surfaces let me put let me start this here so this is an analogy the picture is a little harder to see though because we can't really draw a picture of a function of three variables but we can think about the temperature analogy really easily so the level surface of f of x, y, z at a given c this is a set of all point x, y, z where f of x, y, z equals c So let me do an example and give you like a temperature way of thinking about this um, because it's not easy to think about a graphical way of thinking about this. I'll sort of clarify as we go. Let me clear the screen and I'll clear the screen except for the definition and then we'll give an example. So for example, I'll give you a really nice one. If we had the function say f of x, y, z equals something like um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So we don't really have a way of drawing this because to, to sketch this, uh, we need a four dimensional space, right? Now, but let's suppose we were looking at the level curve at c equals 16. So note, so to sketch f, We need four dimensions so we can't do this because we can't think of it we can we can think of it as w w equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared but we can't sketch it we don't have a four-dimensional space to sketch it in however we can still find the level surface sorry i wrote c for curve i meant s for a surface the level surface is set the function equal to 16. this is a sphere of radius 4. So this I can draw. This is sort of like, interestingly, it's a three-dimensional slice of a four-dimensional object, but that's not a fact we need to know. The point that I want to make is this, right? So that's the level surface. It's a hollow sphere. Is this temperature analogy is if f of x, y, z gives the temperature, then this sphere um, this is where the temperature is 16 degrees and again this is f of x y z gives the temperature at x y z at a point at a point in three-dimensional space then this sphere is where the temperature is 16 degrees celsius again assuming we're with celsius so if you stay on that sphere that's where that temperature is. So it's like a way of understanding what's going on with the function. In this case, even without sketching the function, we can sketch the level surface. Even if we can't sketch the function, it can give us some understanding as to what's going on. So the final point I wanna make is like a sort of an esoteric point, but it'll be useful to us. So let me just clear off the right-hand side of the screen and then we'll do that. So this last point, we won't use it very much, but we'll use it once or twice. I'll say final notes. So note A is that, um, so what we did so far in this, in 13.1b is we said like, okay, given a function, we can draw a level curve. And so what I wanna do here really briefly is reverse that process. I wanna make this following fact, is that every curve in 2D is the level curve for a function of two variables. So I'll just do this by example. Right? So suppose you start out with a curve like y equals x squared. That's a two-dimensional thing. I can rewrite that as x squared minus y equals zero. And then what we can do is we can let f of x, y 
be x squared plus x squared minus y. Now what it says is that y equals x squared. Oops, let me write that right. Y equals x squared is the level curve which was which uh, let's say which results. when f of x, y has c equals zero. Because if I take that function, if I take, just to clarify, let me draw on the paper bit, just to clarify, if I take this function and I set it equal to zero, the result will be the original equation, right? the original curve. So in other words, if you start with a curve in two dimensions, you can sort of create a function of two variables for which that's the level curve. Now we'll need this a little tiny bit later on when we talk about tangent planes, when we talk about uh, Lagrange multipliers, it'll be a little bit helpful to wrap your head around this concept. And likewise, every surface in three dimensions is the level surface for a function of three variables. So for example, if you were to start out with just some arbitrary surface in, three, in, um, in 3D, like some equation, like x squared minus y plus z minus seven equals zero. We can rewrite this. We don't have to, but we could, I'm gonna move the seven over. That doesn't need to happen, in fact, but I will. And then we let f of x, y, z equals x squared minus y plus z. And then, so our original function, oh, I realized, let me just pause up here. When I wrote, so y equals two, this, I don't know why I wrote that. This should be y equals x squared. Let me fix that before it's too late. So down at the bottom, when we say that f of x, y, z be x squared minus y plus z, we can say so x squared minus y plus z equals seven, or minus seven equals zero. Is the level surface, which results? When f of x, y, f, x, y, z, sorry, has c equals seven. Again, that's because like before, if we take this function, we set it equal to seven, we get this equation. So again, this last point is a little bit esoteric. It's not so clear. I think especially why we would use this last point and that's okay. I just wanted to sort of put it there, get it into your head. So when we need it, we'll have it available. So that is the end of 13.1b. Um,